So this video, I'm at least going to go over the how to play. If not for people at home, again, more for myself, because I really should be looking through with this. But uh, yeah, so you can skip this video if you want. This won't be uh, this moment to be published to subscriber. Like, you won't see it. So it would be a silent video. Again, more for myself, if at minimum. So um, kind of obvious. If it's kind of obvious, I won't really stay on it. But uh, so during the day, discuss will be put into cold sleep. After the discussion, all crew members will vote. No, Genosha chooses whom to eliminate during the night. Once all Genosha have been eliminated, crew wins. Conversely, um, yeah, if, if Genosha are at least half or more, then Genosha wins. Uh, these rules are based on traditional werewolf or mafia style social deduction game. Uh, werewolf with the terminology swapped out. Werewolf equals Genosha, hanging equals cold sleep, etc. So, this game was created in such a way as to allow a game traditionally played by a group to be enjoyed by a single player, which, uh, again, I'm approaching, this video, I'm probably approaching things more as a developer, so, if you were to make a single player, I mean, again, there are a lot, I think there are more things to praise than criticisms, but a slew of new elements such as debate-based battles, utilizing RPG-style parameters and skills, and a science fiction-based story have also been added in order to allow for a wide range of rare variations and twists. I remember, um, a quick 10-second tangent, I said before that one of the criticisms was the generic lines. It kind of has to be that way if you're if they're going to design that way, then so if since they designed it with generic lines in question, uh, or using generic lines, then I think it did okay. But I understand why that's a point of criticism. In fact, I was thinking of doing an RPG style. Uh, if if I were to do single player uh, werewolf game, it would be it would have to use RPG parameters of skills. Or if I were making it, but you could use you can use a you can use uh, other types of uh, genres. It just kind of would be weird to mix other genres with it. RPG style or D and D style roles and stuff do fit a lot more usually. Uh, especially for story-based games, you know, because this this was based uh, listed as a visual novel on some sites. So the list of roles. So spice up and enliven, and enliven, enliven says me, the writer. The game's core mechanic, the discussions, range of roles will be allotted as with any social deduction game. Some will provide hints, while others will lie to cause chaos and confusion, etc. So crew, humans with no skills, Genosia, uh the werewolf, the enemy who poses poses as a human and kills other humans, eliminates one person per day. Uh, engineer is a human role. Choose one person today to confirm Huma or Genosia. Doctor, human role. Confirms and reports human or Genosia status of those put into cold sleep. Uh, guardian angel, human role. Can protect one selected person from Genosia attacks. Cannot protect themselves. Guard duty, human role. Two guardian ro duty roles who can vouch for each other as humans. Therefore, they're always human. AC follower, Genosia role. Human but sides with the Genosia. And they win when the Genosia win as long as they are alive as well. And then the bug, the jester. Or the uh, serial killer, the crazy, the crazy man, uh, crazy person, woman. If remaining when human or Genosha victory is decided, the universe is destroyed and the bug wins. Roles can, which can lie can falsely claim to be engineers or doctors and make false reports. So not really as much faking guardian angel or uh, and obviously guard duty um, is what it is. So next discussion, likability, trust. Each character is something that I need to get into or learn about. Each character, including the player, if the tutorial is to be trusted anyway. Okay, that's enough about that. Has a certain level of amicability, i.e. whether they are liked or disliked. I'm going to call it affection because it comes off easier off my tongue. And trust, whether they are considered friend or foe, human or not. So, like, dislike, uh, affection, and trust. So whether they are liked, disliked, trust, friend, or foe for every other character. While debating amicability and affection and trust levels are affected by each character's actions, when you suspect or defend a character or refute someone's argument, these levels will fluctuate accordingly. For example, um, Setsu and Gina's respective levels of, of affection and trust with regard to SQ decrease. So Setsu and Gina start uh, suspecting. Suspecting SQ, when Rakio says S when Rakio says that she suspects SQ, Setsu and Gina, uh, their uh, affection and trust decrease uh, in respect to the, the doubt action. Basically, the level to which you can decrease these affection trust slash trust levels and the level to which you are able to avoid having them decrease depends on the ability levels of the character in question. Refer to the respective affection trust levels when deciding on whom you want to vote for to elim eliminate, which, I mean, I guess can be a point of uh, what's something you can use. Uh, of course, it can always be used against you as well. Rakio hiving high performance, charisma, I forgot. Well, discussion hate. 
Repeating the same comments and taking advantage of powerful skills to swing the debate in a specific direction can cause hate, negative attention from others, to build up. Uh, build up too much hate or fail to speak up at all, cause causing your hate level to decrease too much, and the others will begin to view you suspiciously, negatively, negatively affecting your trust level. So trust level being uh, whether they consider you friend or, friend or foe, uh, as, uh, ex uh, aside from whether you are actually Genosha or not. So Setsu does a lot of comment actions or say, maybe I'd use the ca uh, ca call out uh, if everyone's human too much, then Gina starts... Uh, thinking that Setsu is suspicious, hate increase. Uh, meanwhile, Stella, who um, who remains quiet, quiet too much, uh, may may be getting uh, some suspicion. So hate for so that their hate decreases. But people who look at you and say you don't talk at all might be suspecting you as well. It's what I assume this says. Again, this is assuming the tutorial is giving good enough tips, which I think uh, I think Gnosia does better than most other games on average. If we're looking at a if we're comparing, I think. But uh, feel free to comment and prove me uh, say that I'm wrong. Also, accruing too much hate and drawing attention to yourself while playing as a human will cause the Gnosia to target you more quickly. I swear I won't go on as many tangents anymore. The rate at which one's hate builds up depends on their stealth ability. So Shaming, who has a bunch of stealth, pretty good. Uh, meanwhile, Yuriko, I think Yuriko, and um, or anyone with low stealth, uh, yeah, as a human, if you get too much hate, the Genosha will end up offing you. Abilities, Charm, Lord, Logic, Logic, and Performance. The most crucial abilities for influencing debates are Charisma, Logic, and Performance. The degree to which everyone's uh, affection and trust toward a tournament our uh, target are affected by attacks, quote unquote, in the form of suspect and recovery in the form of defend is dependent on the levels of these abilities. So attack for suspecting, uh, def uh, defend for recovering uh, affection and trust toward a target. Charisma defines how much others will trust and follow your opinions and comments, or said character's opinions and comments. Say, since attacks by followers will further add to the attack power of your own comments, the more people you have following you, the more influential your opinions become. Logic is basically the power of attacks on one's trust. The higher it is, the more damage is dealt to the target's trust level. Of course, that also means that defending a target will also facilitate a greater recovery for their trust level. Additionally, you can also use this to increase the number of comments you can go back and check in the backlog as well. Wait, what? Additionally, you can also use this to increase the number of comments you can go back and check in the backlog as well. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, by using logic in a very interesting way, you can increase the amount of basically evidence that you pile up in the log because, well, it the debate is pretty much evidence. Performance is basically the power of attacks on one one's affection. The higher it is, the more damage is dealt to the target's affection level. Defending a target will also facilitate a greater recovery for their affection level. It also carries the effect of making, harder, uh, making lives harder to spot, making it an extremely important ability when playing as the Kenosha and depending on lies. Uh, so, for example, Rakyo has low charisma, but high logic and performance abilities. Since few people will be swayed by their suspect, it seems as though their influence is weak, but this actually damaged one's affection and trust significantly. Hmm. Okay, I see. So, yeah, she doesn't have high charisma, so when she suspects people or attacks someone, uh, they don't seem to have high... Uh, it That would make you think, based on charisma alone, that they're not uh, capable of outing others. But, uh, yeah, so, but it actually damages uh, one's uh, affection and trust significantly because, well, if someone with low charisma is suspecting you, maybe, I don't know, that's the way I interpret it. Uh, at least how I understand it is, again, since we're treating this RPG style, then charisma logic, uh, as when you're attacking, then you can lower someone's trust level. Basically, I mean, as would be in a social deduction game, especially with AI, you can decrease someone's, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, decrease someone's credibility when you're attacking them, or if you defend someone with high charisma and logic, then other people are uh, more likely to believe in you and defend said person if you defend them. And then performance, uh, affecting someone's affection, uh, lowering, lowering them if your performance is high, uh, or at the same time, defending someone and raising their affection level back up 
In Rakio's case, because she has like pretty much max performance and logic, then uh, she's capable of she's still capable of um, influencing a debate, just not to the direct level that charisma can. I think it's how I understand. Again, if you want, if uh, someone who has more knowledge on Genosha the game can help me out, then I would like to know. So abilities, charm, stealth. Charm is basically a means of defense for preventing your affection and trust levels from decreasing when attacked. The higher your charm level, the more you can soften an opposing party's attack power, and the more efficiently you will be able to refute double uh, refute doubts cast against you and increase the number of people who will help restore your affection and trust levels. It makes it easier to increase your affection level and is a requirement for the Let's Collaborate skill and may, <coughs> and may also excuse me, help trigger character-based events more frequently as well. Next is Stealth. When your hate level is too high or too low, others will begin to suspect you, and Stealth helps to reduce the amount by which your hate increases or decreases. If your Stealth level is high, you can continually make comments against the person you want to eliminate, or avoid having your lies discovered by refraining from commenting and making yourself stand out less. However, you may still be called out by characters with high intuition levels. It also makes it less likely for you to be targeted for elimination by the Genosia. This may be one of the more crucial skills for base survival. For example, SQ has both high stealth and charm levels. Even when doubted, others are generally quick to defend her and she is able to dodge suspicion easily, making it difficult to get others on board to vote her out. Although, well, when if others like catch her in a lie, then yeah, they're probably they've, it's probably dropped to her affection and trust levels have probably dropped too low, so she's going to get voted out. Still trying to figure the difference between affection and trust, but Again, I'll, I can look back at this recording if nothing else. Meanwhile, in Intuition, the big one that I'm stacking in my build, the Intuition ability has no direct effect on per discussions per se. It simply increases your chance of seeing through lies when characters who are able to lie, Kenosha, AC followers, bugs, make false statements. So bugs, yeah, can lie as well. The lower the performance ability of the speaker, the higher your chances of seeing through the lie. Intuition helps you to quickly find liars who should be put into cold sleep as early as possible, making it an important weapon for human characters, as well as an effective way for AC followers to find out who the Genosha is so that they can be protected. So, important for AC followers, but Genosha, unless they say something. Always be sure to watch characters with high intuition levels closely. If the most prominent of these characters, Comet, suddenly begins to strongly suspect a certain person, this may be because she has discovered that they are lying about something. Keep an eye out for these kinds of reactions as they can help you get a better understanding of the situation. Additionally, a lie, quote unquote, is a statement that purposely goes against what the speaker knows to be true, or with no real proof or reason behind it. So... Um, yeah, that second part I is kind of a... Uh, but, no, yeah, so... A lie in this game is treated as something that someone knows is false, and then they proceed to proclaim otherwise. The easiest example is Genosha coming out and saying, I'm engineer or doctor. That's obviously a lie and therefore can be caught. For the Genosha, suspecting a human or defending an, an ally is a lie. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the an, uh, example of a lie. Uh, defending a human or doubting an ally is not a lie if you are a... Uh, if you are a human, or if if the target is a human, say SQ is the Genosha, and defense, she defends Setsu as a human, defending a human or doubting an ally is not a lie. So if Setsu was Genosha and she doubts Setsu, then that's not going to be caught as a lie. When an AC follower acts as an engineer, any report they give will be a lie. So, oof. Uh, so high performance level of your AC follower. Otherwise, probably shouldn't think about claiming a role. Unless, of course, Comet and a few others are dead with high intuition. Uh, that's how I... Think of, uh, consider that. Skills. Some skills can prove effective in helping you navigate discussions by assisting you in dis discovering enemies or avoiding suspicion, and it require at least a certain level of for some abilities. For example, the skill Definite Enemy, which informs everyone that a person making suspicious statements is an enemy, requires a certain logic ability level, and the Don't Be Fooled skill, which makes a suspicious target's lies easier to spot and nullifies their stealth ability for a set amount of time, requires a high intuition ability. You can take advantage of these skills to pick up on powers influencing the discussion, which would be more difficult to spot simply by raising abilities levels. However, you cannot use these skills simply by increasing ability levels. You will need to learn them from characters who can use these skills during certain events. Skills can usually be acquired via events marked with the red exclamation mark on the map during the nighttime free movement parts of the game. Be sure not to miss out on these events. Note, however, that these events are not guaranteed to occur simply because you have the ability levels required to acquire the skill. Sometimes they just don't happen, so 
Sorry. For detailed information on skill effects and the required ability levels, check out the command list in the start menu. So again, picking up skills, uh, I'll need to do that, but it's pretty much RNG is the base point, and skills can be powerful. At, uh, I think the implicit, there's some things in between the lines where maybe using these skills might uh, expose you to be crew and therefore expose you to Genosha attack, but you know, that's something completely different. So nighttime movement part. Once the discussion is over and voting cold sleep uh, slash cold sleep preparations are complete, before going into the warp, the player character is able to select one location to move to and speak with the character or characters there. To make things easier, we'll call this time of the day night, with the discussion part labeled as day. Alright, so I have some terms to use. Select a person, a green person mark to move to the apl applicable location where the character there will make a single comment. You can sometimes discern from these comments whether the character likes or dislikes you or whether or not they realize that you're, you aren't human. So kind of what I thought before, but kind of this kind of confirms. Unless, of course, it's a lie and the tutorial's wrong. Please let me know. Generally, visiting a character like this increases your affection with that character. So again, something else that I thought was happening. Two important night specific game elements are events and leveling up, which is leveling up, which is done in your room. When the orange level up sign marking is displayed on your room, you are able to use the experience points you've accumulated to increase your ability levels by at least one. When the green person mark is displayed on a location as opposed to a red exclamation mark, various events will occur, allowing you to acquire new skills and obtain information crucial to advancing the story. Uh, what? Oh, uh, anywho, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out later. Once the nighttime part has ended, depending on your role, you will be able to select a person to investigate or eliminate, after which the debate part will begin for the next day. And then I think some examples of logical inconsistency, so we might as well go over uh, part one or example one. For characters able to lie, it is crucial to falsely present, prevent, present oneself as an engineer or doctor and purposely make false or otherwise made up reports, thus preventing the others from obtaining or believing factual information provided by other characters. However, these lies will sometimes fail to line up with the current situation, making it clear that the person giving the report is lying. We kind of expected that. I've also seen some people talk about that, so without spoiling myself, obviously. This is known as a logical failure or inconsistency and can be pointed out using the definite enemy logic skill. This can occur in a wide variety of situations, some of which are readily clear and some of which are more complicated and take some time and deep thought to recognize. It can be helpful to try assuming, for example, if this person really is an engineer, then... dot dot dot, and working from there to check whether or not the comments in question line up with what you know to be true. Here we will describe several common types of logical inconsistencies. A person reported by an engineer to be Gnosia has disappeared. So someone that was someone that an engineer reported as Genosia uh, disappears. This is simple. The engineer is clearly lying. A Genosia will never eliminate another Genosia. It is uh, impossible from the rules of the game, uh, or this game anyway. When there are no AC followers or bugs, only Genosia, an opposing engineer or doctor has disappeared. When the only present character capable of lying is Genosia, and the two people have claimed to be and two people have claimed to be a, a human role, engineer or doctor, the remaining must be Genosia. This is because the disappearance itself is proof, proof that the person is human, due to the uh, clause above where a Genosia can never eliminate another Genosia. If an engineer is eliminated in the in the event that there are no AC followers or bugs, then well, the person remaining has to be Genosia. So. Again, I've looked into to some of these, uh, but uh, I, I, it, it helps to kind of make it clear. Again, unless the tutorial uh, messes something up, there was something I wanted to, else I wanted to say, but I forgot. <laughs> uh, logical inconsistencies, part two or number two. There is no true engineer or doctor left. This occurs when engineers or doctors have announced their presence on the first day, and you know that one of them is definitely the real thing. True engineers or doctors don't need any sort of plotting to get their story straight, and the reports will never contradict the facts. I'll repeat that again for at least myself. True engineers or doctors or crew crew roles that are actually crew do, don't. Uh, their stories will always be straight. The reports will never contradict the facts. If a doctor's report contradicts all of the engineer reports, then it's clear that the doctor is fake. Be sure to make sure. Be sure to check to make sure whether there is at least one doctor or engineer whose reports line up with uh, with a doctor or engineer in question. So uh, I think someone talked about this before. 
So don't just look at one set of a report or one type of report, either a doctor's report or engineer reports. Look at them. Uh, more importantly, would be to look at a doctor and an engineer's reports together, and therefore you will spot more inconsistencies and be able to tell who is who, at least as crew. Failure to meet clear conditions. This type of failure happens often to more cowardly liars. Doctor's reports indicate how many Genosha are left. If certain doc if a certain doctor continuously reports that the people they checked out were human, then there should be more than enough Genosha to take over, so why haven't they? And why hasn't the game ended? So if there are three Genosha left, and well, if you assume that three Genosha left and there are three humans, and some suddenly six people make it to the next day, then um, by the rule of this game, Genosha should win. But if the doctor keeps reporting everyone's human, but the game hasn't ended in that case, that means there can only be two left. So the doctor's made a mistake, uh, and might be, and probably is an enemy. So this may be another clear out logical inconsistency. Sometimes an engineer fearing being targeted by the Genosha will keep reporting that everyone they check out is human, quote unquote, and end up having reported that everyone remaining is human, but the game has yet to end. This can throw some this can also throw things in, into confusion. It sometimes takes courage to be able to lie efficiently. So uh, this part, I mean the doctor's report is much more clear. If the doc if it is a real doctor, uh, then they should be reporting the truth if Genosha is out. If it's a fake doctor, however, um yeah, if if a cowardly liar or someone who's trying to cover themselves keeps reporting human, they out themselves by nature of, well, there are four people left, and we if there were two Genosha left, they would have automatically won. And then the doctor says that the person who died was human. So uh, so, uh, yeah, this may be another clear, and then the second part is an engineer is a bit more tricky, I think, is how I interpret it, because, um, an engine, a real en crew engineer doesn't want to die, so they'll report that someone they checked out is human, or if that's a, if this is the lie, and then, um, yeah, so that also, same thing as the doctor, there are too many humans, quote unquote, pretty much, so there's something fishy there, at least. Logical inconsistency part three. Two people have disappeared by bug elimination, uh, or uh, a bug was eliminated, I assume, but let's keep reading. I'll, again, I'll try to stop, anyway, keep going. Be but the person you eliminated hasn't been investigated. So two people have disappeared, uh, a bug was eliminated, and one was killed by Genoshi, I assume, but the person you eliminated hasn't been investigated. Only true engineers can eliminate bugs. A single, a quote-unquote single punch knockout, end quote, like this is, well, simply bad luck. In this game, it is impossible to lie about whom you investigated. When you plan to report someone as Genosha, but they end up being eliminated, the report to, will change to human. However, this is an extremely easy to spot lie. So, whom you investigated is in quotes. Um, yeah, so if you investigate someone, um, it's not quite, it's uh, hard to lie about. So when you plan to report someone as Genosha, but they end up, you know, uh, getting eliminated, the report will change to human. Because, well, if someone's eliminated as, a, if someone's eliminated, whether it's a bug, uh, if it's a bug who's eliminated, I think they're, are they human? Well, we'll find, well, actually, let's go back and check. Uh, I can't tell. Well, we'll just keep going. Uh, but it's an easy to spot lie by the way of this tutorial saying. And then next, not enough AC followers or bugs. This becomes likely to occur when there are a large number of fake engineers or doctors. Assuming that a particular engineer is the real thing, then the only engineers or doctors whom that engineer could investigate and reportedly assume in would be the true doctor or an AC follower, and if they were a bug, then they would be eliminated that night. Therefore, if an engineer reports two or more engineers or doctors as being human, or if later on an in, 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 in uninvestigated character is attacked and eliminated, then that's proof that they are fake. Because of this, investigating an opposing engineer and falsely reporting them as human is an extremely easy to spot and fruitless lie. Conversely, an engineer reporting an opposing engineer as human does indeed seem somewhat trustworthy. So let me repeat this again. Because, because uh, of um, an uninvestigated character being attacked and eliminated, and if a report an engineer reports, uh, or if an engineer reports two or more other crew roles as human, um, it's uh, likely proof that they are a fake. 
Uh, so because of that clause, investigating an opposing engineer and falsely reporting them as human when they are in fact an enemy is um, a pretty bad lie. Conversely, if you report someone as human, it's more trustworthy. Be I, yeah. So these kinds of situations or a combination of them can cause logic in logical inconsistencies for fake engineers and doctors. It also makes it easier to figure out who's who through a simple process of elimination. Be sure to try and point stuff like this out before the other characters. It's kind of fun. Uh, so I won't be able to do that because uh, getting this all in my head, yeah, I'm going to forget something if you know who how I play. But I'll try to keep this in mind or at least look back at it as I, you know, after recording this. So... Uh, nothing really much, but um, we can at least go through this if you're wondering what these icons means. So, uh, so the engineer's report are shown in the on the left. Uh, so green person means human, red skull means Genosha according to the report. So I assume that this is what the engineer reports that the character on screen is. Uh, so yeah. And otherwise, yeah, otherwise, and then there's their collaborator, which shows your, the main character's icon, the symbol that will be shown when the commenter, so the person on screen, is a collaborator. Uh, the speaker's name tag will turn red when the player knows the commenter to be a Genosha, or at least the game um, tells you that they are Genosha by nature of your main character in game, uh, seeing, spotting them as such. Uh, the command name is pretty there, and then all, these are all the other, these are all the other kind of, uh, so they're they're self-explanatory, and then the target to whom that they are speaking to, which I, I'm glad this is a good quality of life thing. Anyway, but uh, yeah, the engineer's report was kind of confusing to me, but I kind of understand it now. Q is uh, it's all self-explanatory. I don't think I should, should need to go through this, but pause if you need to look at that. E key is pretty much the same as well. So. I mean, it's kind of a cheat sheet, I guess, but I mean, if you're setting settings up at the beginning of a loop, it's self-explanatory. Data reference. These contain everything. Uh, again, I won't show this for long. Log uh, as well, but let me just go over. So, since actions that simply line up with characters' comments don't really stand out, um, they will not be recorded. So, uh, again, things that people tack on, so if someone defended uh, Stella with Yuriko in the Shigamichi comment, then it won't show up. But um, I, I don't know if that they should have said if this is important or not, but maybe someone will tell me. Open up the log once a final decision has been reached to see active roles and lies people have told. That's what you see me do at the end of the loops. What people have done during the night, during warp, and what other info that was previously hidden, which um, helps you figure out, you know, how people's pers uh, the characters' personalities might be. So here, uh, I'm not going to be here for long as well, uh, self-explanatory, except for this part where the player needs to be human or the player needs to be Genosha, but I've already gone through that as well. Uh, engineer report is next. So each engineer is giving a temporary number. You can tell what the report says by the color of the number. Uh, for example, here Shigemichi uh, has reported uh, has been reported as human by Shippi and Genosha by Jonas, and they are currently in cold sleep. So, that again, something that I uh, needed to look into just in case, but uh, I kind of, uh, now that confirmed what I believe to be true. Doctor's report, same thing. Uh, the example here is that Stella has been reported as human by Xiaoming, and Remnant reported her as Genosha, as um, indicated by the green number one for Xiaoming, and red number two reported by Remnant. So the doctor reports should let you know how many Genosha are present, if they line up with the engineer reports, or if there are any discrepancies, that is up for you to determine. Next, the start menu. These are pretty, you know, <laughs> self-explanatory. I'll I'll also be pausing in case I need to read that. And then the pause screen. It's or the uh, night part. Uh, night actions are well, it's self-explanatory. I've gone through it. Or the and the other page has gone into it as well. And so the results. So when conditions are fulfilled for winning, or when the main character has been put in cold sleep or otherwise eliminated, the you go to the end of the loop. So not really anything else. Uh, gray has disappeared, so I assume that's for the bug or unless something weird happens. And yeah, that's uh, yeah. And then the setup is for uh, uh, meta-wise, it's for trying to manipulate events in case you're, I guess, you're event farming. But 
you know, uh, it is what it is. I'll pause if you need to look at that, and we'll keep on going. Again, this kind of might be a longer episode, but we'll see how my other ones come on. So unlocking, or advancing the story, unlock notes. Gnosia can be played for a single round as a t- traditional werewolf-style game, or you can play it as an adventure game, make, making your way all the way through the story to reach the ending. To play through the whole story, you'll need to get to know the ins and outs of the various characters. Specifically, you'll need to fill in the notes in the crew data section. So that's how you progress the story. Um, and you can check it through going through the pause menu in game. To unlock the notes, you'll need to succeed at certain events. To succeed at these events, you have to view the events that occurred during the night, where the exclamation red red exclamation mark is displayed all th- the way through to the end. Some of them will be simple, and some of them will require you to fulfill certain conditions in the debate part. For example, survive till the end with a certain person, put a person certain person to cold sleep, etc. Event searching. There are a number of conditions which must be met for a specific event to occur. Certain characters playing certain roles and having a certain level of fondness for each other, the main character playing a certain role, etc. When you want to play further through the story, but events just don't seem to occur, it may be because some or all of these conditions conditions have not yet been met. When that happens, try pressing the avert vent search button on the setup screen, which um, hasn't appeared for me yet, but uh, maybe it is there, but I haven't tried because I'm just doing a couple loops randomly. Uh, so it'll automatically tweak the adjustable conditions to help spur the occurrence of an event. Leave the autofill conditions as is and continue with the game. There are some events which will never occur unless the main character and the other character or characters involved are playing the roles required for said event. Try using the event search function to try out roles you haven't used much before the chance to s- before for the chance to see events you have yet to encounter, which is complete. Basically, it's complete RNG, but you can uh, get RNG in your favor. Foster relationships. If there's a specific character whose events you'd like to check out, try defending them during debates and visiting them at night to increase your affection level with the character in question. Most events occur when your affection level with the involved character is high. Some events are triggered by using defend on a specific character. If you haven't been using the defend option much, try using it on someone to see if that doesn't set off an event you have yet to witness. There are also events that will not occur or progress until you collaborate with a certain character. For example, even if you notice that your collaborator is lying about something, if you continue to cooperate with them and survive together till the end, you may get to see a special ending or unlock special items and etc. If you feel like you're stuck in a place at some point in the story, you may try want to try using the let's collaborate function with another character. By the way, Characters' ability levels increase with each special item unlocked. These levels will also increase in small increments as you repeat loops. Try fostering relationships, collaborating with, and surviving together with different characters. And that's it. So, Q&A will be keep going. Uh, Yeah, so we'll keep going. So, Q&A part one. I'm told I'm annoying. Each time you make a comment, your level of attention, hate, from the others increases. Suspect and defend in particular, as well as the use of the skills, bring particular attention to you. Also, when you yourself are doubted, quickly and carelessly uh, denying accusations and arguing back will be seen as unnatural behavior, causing you to stand out further. After having the group's attention placed on you, try to refrain from commenting for a little while and hang back and wait for everyone to cool down a bit. You can increase your stealth ability to stand out less when making comments and using skills. So I know this personally because Otome told me to uh, shut up. <laughs> so she used the action on me, so I know how that how that is. I keep getting put into cold sleep. Most people will cast their vote for those they find untrustworthy, dislikable, sketchy, and those who stand out. All four of those phrases in quotation marks. The higher your charm ability is, the more likable you will seem to others and the less likely you will be seen as untrusty when doubted, which can be extremely helpful. You can also increase your stealth ability to stand out less when making comments and using skills. Oops. Uh, When playing as Genosia or another part of the characters incapable of lying, if your performance ability is low, your lies will be seen through quickly and you'll be more likely to get sent to cold sleep. So be careful. Yeah, I know that. (laughs) <laughs> this is why I try not to lie. So I can mouse wheel roll, I could do that, but I'll just keep zooming out to my this obvious one I'm picking. I got taken out by the Gnosia again. First off, those with attracting those attracting those with attracting a lot of attention or hate become easy targets. So those attracting a lot of attention, like for crew, um for Gnosia you'll attract the Gnosia's attention. Try increasing your try increasing your stealth ability to stand out less and avoid being targeted. Additionally, characters claiming to be engineers, etc., and those for whom it is clear that they are not Gnosia card duty are also quick to be targeted. Also, if the Gnosia possess a 
If the Gnosia possesses a very logic-oriented possibility, a personality, they will place high importance on one's role and likelihood of interference when defining, deciding on whom to target next. But conversely, Gnosia who are more emotionally driven will generally go straight for those whom they dislike. Attacking them will likely make you an easy target for elimination. If you feel like you may be targeted on a particular night, try using the stealth-based skill Small Talk to throw the Gnosia off their guard and become less likely to be targeted. Otherwise, in my personal experience, as small as it is, uh, it seems that I'm going to be going with talking less often to since my stealth uh, level is, uh, or my stealth stat is completely low. Why does everyone hate me? The answer to this is charm <laughs> in-game. Charm is a defensive ability that, likes you, make, make, that makes you more likable while also making you less likely to be distrusted and garner negative attention. It's basically the same as in real life, really. Uh, if you'd like to see what it's like living life as a really dislikable person, try playing the game with your charm ability set to the lowest level. It might be a pretty eye-opening experience. I don't know about that, but game-wise I understand what they mean. Nobody listens to me. Convincing people to listen to you requires finesse. With a high charisma level, more people will agree with and support your opinions, and a high logic level will help you to get others on your side when you find a particular character to be untrustworthy. But a high performance level will allow you to move people emotionally. Being able to read the room in yellow is also crucial. Defending someone whom everyone else sees as an enemy is pointless, and if there's anyone who's actively standing up to you, uh, they'll most likely jump on any comments you might make. It's really frustrating when there's someone you know to be an enemy, yet you end up losing because nobody will agree with you. However, it's important to accept that sometimes these things just happen, and to shake it off and look forward to the next battle. So, uh, the short version is RNG, the longer version is um, there are some people you will lose that you know are crew, and if there's no way to defend them, you just have to make yourself... You just, you just have to survive as the player, is what I take away from that. Does the engineer or doctor have to come forward? When a fake has come forward, if you don't come out and claim your role at the same time, then it will be assumed that you aren't actually filling the role in question and you will be unable to claim the role later on. Really? Therefore, in times like this, it's best to assert your role. If you absolutely do not want to step forward, well, nobody's going to force you to, but still, uh, you may be in for trouble. So, I, yeah, apparently you can't, uh, you can't claim the role later on if a fake does, so whoopsie doopsie. That puts you in the crosshairs of the Gnosia, but... <sighs> also, the noise gate cut out my the beginning of that side. What is definite enemy, or what is definite human, the action? The logic-based skills definite enemy and definite human can only be used when it has been positively confirmed that someone is lying, an AC follower, Gnosia, or bug, or is human, not Gnosia or a bug. Uh, respectively, so definite human, a definite enemy for enemy roles and definite human for human roles. Uh, by, and they've been confirmed. We'll see what that means, if maybe. When a person has been flagged with definite enemy, they may become unable to make comments and votes will be concentrated on them. Conversely, if flagged with definite human, they will no longer be doubted. If you don't point this fact out, then characters who are not very logic-oriented <laughs> um, will f a lot not very logic-oriented thinkers will fail to notice that the person in question is an enemy or a human. So there has to be some way that you can, through the game, uh, point someone out uh, as uh, enemy or human. Logical thinkers take a variety of factors into consideration and will sometimes chime in with definite enemy at times that may feel strange to the player, but if you pay close attention to engineer and doctor reports and thoroughly read through the log, you'll understand their reasoning. Probably. Sometimes it can take a while to fully understand the meanings of entries in the log. So, uh, so basically, uh, the for if someone else is using these actions, then I assume it means that the character has sp or the game is telling you that there is a, a logical inconsistency that said character has figured out. So, yeah, uh, I don't know about the player, but we'll see if that happens when I when I finally raise my logic. Anyway, two people two people disappeared simultaneously. That means one was a victim of a Gnoshi attack, and the other was a bug eliminated by the Engineer. A double disappearance like this is the per perfect opportunity to discover who the true Engineer is, as I kind of thought. Uh, whatever, whichever Engineer hadn't investigated the person who disappeared is not the true Engineer. A fake Engineer has to decide who to investigate the night before, and a record of this will remain, so they are unable to lie about this. 
There are other times apart from simultaneous disappearances when you'll get a, the chance to figure out who is a bug. For example, if settings dictate that there is no guardian angel present, there's gonna, always going to be one present for my first like 20-30 loops probably, and an attack fails, that means that the Gnosia found out that the person they had selected for elimination was a bug. Also, if the Guardian Angel has chosen to protect someone, yet that person ends up disappearing anyway, that means that the person they had chosen to protect was investigated by the Engineer, and they were a bug, so they disappeared. Roles discovered in this way will be reflected in current situation, accessible via Q. Really? Well, I'll have to check that out when that if and when that happens, if I remember as well. I want to increase a bunch of levels! When finishing a loop, the amount of XP you earn depends on the difficulty level of that loop. Really? Making the loop more difficult, for example, by including six Genosha and no engineers or guardian angels, and clearing the loop as a human, or by clearing the loop as a single Genosha with 14 humans, etc., will allow you to score a whole mess of mess of XP and mass. I mean, it's gonna be pretty hard, but still. Also, you can earn an XP bonus by successfully clearing events. Okay, that makes sense. Additionally, you can gain experience by doing things like surviving together with a collaborator, or defending against Genosha attacks as a Garden Angel, or Angel, or if your character able is able to lie, by falsely claiming to be an engineer or a doctor, and etc. Basically, if something seems like it would be harder to survive, or if you cause something that wouldn't normally happen to occur, you'll generally be rewarded with XP. All right. Noted. Along with surviving longer, so there must be a day multiplier as well. Uh, that's how I program it, or I think that would be a good idea to design a game that way. I want to reconfigure my ability levels. Try playing a role you wouldn't normally take on, and something cool just might happen. Oh, and setting the number of characters to 15 may prove beneficial as well. So I think I kind of skimmed off this on accident. Uh, there are a couple things, not really spoiler-ish, but I think it's uh, a character who allows you to do to respect basically, to use a larval tier. So everything is basically random, right? The characters will behave in accordance with their respective personalities. Again, that's kind of how I would probably program a social deduction game of some sort or mystery. If a kind person is turned into Kenosha, they will likely do what they can to protect and defend their friends, while if the Kenosha is a more self-centered person, they'll be more likely to throw their friends under the bus, depending on the situation. More logical, more logical Genosha will consider things like avoiding those likely to be protected by a guardian angel when deciding whom to eliminate, but will also take into account the fact that they need to get rid of the true engineer, and etc. Similarly, more emotionally driven Genosha will keep targeting people that they don't like. As you play though, as you play through, if you can get a grasp on the various characters' respective personalities and behavioral patterns, you'll become better able to read the situation and have to rely less on luck and come out ahead by manipulating the AI because you know how the game works. That said, if you can encounter a situation such as, say, I started off as Genosha and my comrades turned out to be Shigemichi and Comet. Hey, that just happened to me! Um, well, put simply, your luck just kinda sucks. If you really want to, you'll be you'll be able to restart a loop with uh, initial settings, so go for it. Next, uh, okay, so what exactly is a quote-unquote lie? In this world, only Genosha, AC followers, and bugs tell lies. Uh, conversely, that means crew can only tell the truth. And if your intuition is high enough, you'll sometimes be able to see through these lies. So, to give you some concrete examples of lies, I'm still reading the tutorial. Um, the Genosha knows who is Genosha, quote unquote. Therefore, a Genosha stating that another Genosha is human, or stating that a non Genosha is Genosha, counts as a lie. As I expected, AC followers and bugs do not know who is Genosha. Therefore, a false engineer or doctor asserting that this person is Genosha or that person is human, uh, in essence, uh, making false made up reports is a lie. When you are not an engineer or doctor, stating that you are is a lie. Also, doubting someone you don't actually feel is suspicious or defending someone you actually do see as suspicious are technically lies as well as but these lies don't really count in the game. So uh, yeah, that kind of, I came to a conclusion as well. But yeah, AAC followers and bugs technically don't know. So basically it's pretty logical in terms of the, how the game is programmed. But the one uh, shining exception is that uh, if you suspect someone uh, or if you doubt someone that you don't think is actually suspicious, or if you defend someone who you do believe is actually suspicious, uh, maybe as a big brain player or something, it's a lie, but the game can't read that basically. So. Oof, we're going long, so I'm gonna. I'm not gonna speed through. I'm gonna keep them. But Q and A part two. What do I do to advance the story? Help! 
Special events will sometimes occur throughout the game. The general story will progress as you clear these events and unlock special items pertaining to the characters appearing in these events. Unlock special items can be viewed in the crew member data section of data reference. So, I mean, they, they're they trying to push you along. The events don't seem to be triggering, though. After making some progress through the story, you'll be able to uh, become able to use the event search function at the beginning of a loop. Event search will automatically configure conditions such as number of people, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think I've gone over this already in another one. So, uh, skipping a paragraph. That said, uh, when an event is triggered and a character's special items are unlocked, that character's ability levels will be increased significantly, so it may become more difficult to win. Events will occur at some point even without using event search. It's easier and more fun to play simply using the character and role configurations you like. Uh, probably. Anyway, have fun! Thanks, game! Thanks, devs. <laughs> but the events still aren't happening. Defending someone, or visiting them at night and becoming friendly with them, can also make events more likely to occur. We heard this already. Also collaborating, or otherwise building a positive relationship, and then surviving with them, may also cause something to happen. So, really hammering it in, at least the exaggeration has meaning. Sometimes you'll see a crew member mark or a Genosha mark uh, that I've yet to be unlocked. These signify that they'll be unlocked when you're playing specifically as said role. I know. Uh, I have no idea what to do now. I have no idea what to do now. When this happens, just try doing all sorts of different things. Things will fall into place and pick back up again eventually. Don't give up. Uh, yeah, that sounds pretty idealistic, but seriously, you'll eventually realize what it is you need to do. All right. I want to delete everything and uninst- Okay, I probably shouldn't do that, so- Algorithm, please, and start over. So you want to experience the awesomeness all over again. <laughs> got it! While you can't actually erase all of your memories, you can delete your save data and all of your clear data will disappear along with it. If you really want to start completely over from the very beginning, go to the title load screen and delete all of your save- all of your save data. Hmm. I usually think, yeah, syntax is usually, I want a break. What do I save? The save thing is only displayed momentarily, so you're likely to miss it. Thanks. But Kenosha uses an autosave feature, feature. The game will save your data automatically when a day begins, when a discussion or voting session or cold sleep decision ends, and when a loop ends. Or you can press escape during very, very uh, select moments and return to title. I, I, I want to go back and see the comments, though. Oh, you mean the backlog? Yep, we've got one of those. During debate or event, you can press and hold the backlog key to review past comments. Really? But how? However, how far back you're able to remember depends on the main character's logic ability level. Really? What do you mean? If your logic is at one, only one line of the backlog will be displayed. That's right! Logic is directly related to your memory. Wow. Pulled the wool over my eyes. So, that's, so that should be it for now. I went over the how to play. This will be its own video. I don't know when it's going to be released, but... When I release it, I'll release it. I'll see you there. I'll see you later when I play a continuously again.